you're probably wondering which madman gave me the keys to a half a million pound classic BMW M1. And I'm thinking exactly the same thing, but fortunately, a friend of mine who's big into collecting rare and fabulous cars has been extremely kind and let me borrow this car. Now, before I get into fully introducing this car, have you ever wondered why the BMW 1M, the 2009 BMW 1M was ever called the 1M, but it wasn't called the M1, like every other M series car that BMW has ever made. Well, it's because of this car. This is the BMW M1. Before we get into things, before we explaining a lot more about this car to you, I just want to share with you a couple of numbers, a couple of facts and figures that for me puts into context this car more than any 0 to 60 time or lap time ever could. And that is 457 and 500,000. Now, I'm sure you can see where I'm going, but let's start with 457. And that was the production quantity of the BMW M1. The, the reason for its small production number was that back in the 70s, BMW wanted to get into GT racing. They wanted to compete in the World Championships. And in order to qualify at that time, the cars that were entering had to be road cars. And to class a car as a road car, it needed to be homologated. And so the production numbers, whoo, 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 Oh, it sounds lovely. The production numbers for this car were, were capped out. They were capped at 399 road cars and the extra were made into race cars in a series that eventually became known as the Pro Car Series, but we'll get round to that shortly. So, as a result, only 399 road cars were built of the M1. And that's where that 500,000 comes in. Because 30 years later, the BMW M1 is now trading hands for half a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, this BMW could easily be sold for 500 grand, which is amazing. I mean, when we associate you know expensive numbers with BMWs these days, they're nowhere near that figure. So yeah, I'm currently driving a half a million quid BMW. And it's from the 70s. Now, what was strange about this car was BMW at that time actually approached Lamborghini to develop this car. They were involved in racing at that time and BM thought that they would be a suitable partner to help them to design the car and develop it for a racing series. And that basically has a lot to do with why this car looks like it was a Lamborghini from the 70s. It's because that's exactly what it was. BM teamed up with them, their design team took over, which is why the front of this car looks like a cheese wedge and the back of it has two BMW badges. I've never seen a road car with two logo badges on it. The reason for that was it had so much Lamborghini design emphasis in it that when it was on the road, when you were being overtaken by this car, BMW didn't want you to think that you were being overtaken by a Lambo. And that's not the only thing that Lamborghini left in this car. This has had a heavy slap of 70s Italian car design DNA. And they filled the footwell with, I would say, 70% wheel arch. And as a result, you've got that sort of offset driving position of Italian sports cars from the 70s. So let's get into what this car really is. Well, up until the BMW i8, this was the only, the only ever mid rear engine car that BMW ever made, which in itself makes it a very significant car. It's a 3.5 liter straight six. And at that time in the 70s, it was running 277 brake horsepower, which by modern day standards doesn't sound much, but this car, bang on the nose, weighs just 1,300 kilograms. And when you're in it and up it, just change it down this lovely Douglas gearbox. <laughs> And it's light on its toes. Of course, in this era, there was no power steering. Not, not from these cars, anyway. And it's lovely. It dances and it flows. And it feels like a proper car. If you think about Italian sports cars of the 70s, 
the last thing you think about is a good driving experience. And that's essentially what this is. While it has a BMW engine in it, it was still given to Lamborghini. Halfway through that development stage, unfortunately, the rules in the World Championships that BMW were looking to enter completely changed. And also, Lamborghini went bankrupt. So <laughs> this car from day one hasn't had much of a successful history just getting this thing off the ground. So what BM were left with was a cool looking car with a great engine, but no series to race in and no partner to back it up. Left with all these cars, BM were like, what are we gonna do now? How can we possibly justify this program, justify these cars? And so they made up an entirely new race series just for this car called Pro Car. And things broke loose. Things went absolutely ape. They ended up turbocharging this car, which as I just mentioned is conventionally only 277 horsepower, and they ended up running 850 horsepower. I mean, <laughs> don't forget, the road car weighs 1300 kilograms, the race car even less. I, I implore you to go after this video, YouTube search for BMW M1 Pro Car and just listen to those things. They are absolutely savage. The overrun is just firing flames out all day long. And as a series, it used to follow the Formula One circuit as its support race. And they were absolutely fantastic. So what went from a sort of rocky start, got off the road, quite literally an explosive engine that made these cars super cool and also very desirable. Now, what is interesting is at that time in the 70s, the other cars that this was competing with was the Porsche 930 Turbo, the Ferrari 512BB, and at that time, a Ferrari was around 20,000 pounds, which in 70s money was a lot of money. The M1 was pushing out 35 grand for a BMW in the 70s. So it was niche from day one. There was no chance your average Joe was ever gonna get hold of one of these cars. And that's part of the reason now that the M1 is worth half a million pounds. In fact, there was an example a few years ago, only three of these cars were ever made in silver. One of them was commissioned by F1 mogul Bernie Eccleston. That car recently sold for 600,000 pounds. Yeah. Now, some of the favorite features of mine on this car are, of course, the pop-up headlights, but with it first and foremost being a race car, it has twin entry fuel caps, which, okay, that's available on self-respecting sports cars, but these are housed behind their own little glass doors. I've never seen a design feature like it on any car. They have their own little glass boxes the fuel caps are in and they're, they're hidden behind them. I've never seen it before, but now I know the history, you realize that what you're actually in is a race car, hence two fuel caps. Like any good lightweight sports car, it's all about when this car is rolling. And with it having no power steering, it feels beautiful. There's loads of feedback, it's very organic. But something else, arguably more significant, came out of the M1, which is why it's a very important car, is that this engine eventually became the very first engine that was featured in the first BMW M5, albeit then that they tuned it up even more. But with that understanding, you can appreciate why this is such a special car. It's part of history. It's cooler because underneath is Bavarian engineering. It's the finest Bavarian skill and it's beautiful. It runs fabulously. The engine's sweet. We've got a dogleg gearbox, of course, because it originated as a race car. But just listen to the engine. Oh. Of course, by modern day standards, it's not fast at all. But that's not the point, is it? You're getting in something which provides just a totally unique driving experience from basically anything that you can buy now. I like it. I really like this car. I'm going to have to have my uh, chiropractor on speed dial because I'm so offset. But other than that, it's beautiful. So you're probably wondering which madman gave me the keys to a half a million pound classic BMW M1. 
And I'm thinking exactly the same thing, but fortunately, a friend of mine who's big into collecting rare and fabulous cars has been extremely kind and let me borrow this car today. But I've also got to say a massive thank you to Don Law Racing. Now, Don Law, if you don't know these guys, they particularly specialize in Jaguar XJ220s. And when I say specialize, these guys are the global authority on all things XJ220. Um, but every now and again, they also do up some other incredibly rare and special cars, and my friend left it in their hands. So he said, you know what, drive up to turn and see Don. He'll pass you the keys and off you go. So massive thank you to my friend, but also a, a huge thank you as well to Don Law for just taking his time to show me this car. Also, coming soon, I'm gonna have to do some more features on this guy and his cars. They got some amazing XJ220s. The company history and story as well is fantastic. So I'm going to try and get Justin Law on full chat soon in a very special car. Uh, I guarantee it is one of one, the only car in the world of this kind, which will be coming soon. But other than that, I look forward to sharing more adventures. And as always, if you like what you've seen, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Ciao.